It's uh, April 24th, 2018. This is Andrew in Omaha, Nebraska. And today I'm gonna be working on a holster for the Glock Model 23. It's gonna look similar to this. Um, this is one I finished a little while ago. I haven't put the snaps for the thumb brake on, but basically it's worn on the, this one will be worn on the right hip and there'll be uh, a snap right here which will allow the wearer to uh, use it as a thumb brake. So it keeps the weapon secured when uh, they're wearing it, but makes it easy for them to draw it out. I got the pattern for this, uh, for this uh, holster from Adams Leatherworks. I'll put a description in the uh, box below if you're interested in it. And I'm going to make this holster out of some of the leather I have left over from the uh, messenger bag I made. I'm going to make the outside, well the inside and the outside are going to be made from the same leather. Uh, the outside is going to be this, uh, basically it's about six ounce um, harness leather. And then the liner I'm going to make out of this skived, or this piece that's been skived down to Oh, this is about two ounce, but it's a vegetable tan leather, so it'll allow me to wet form it around the weapon. And uh, it'll take its form, and then once it dries, it holds the form. So, and I'll also use my Cobra Class 3 uh, sewing machine with a 207 nylon thread to sew it all together. Now that I have the four main pieces cut out, this is what they'll kind of look like. This is the outside piece, and there's the liner. And they'll be sandwiched together, and I'll glue those together. Same thing with the inside piece. And it's real important. I know I, for, I forgot to do this several times on other holsters that I've made when practicing this, but uh, the thumb brake has this little metal uh, piece here to help uh, make it a little more rigid. And I want that sandwiched in between these two pieces of leather so it doesn't scratch the weapon uh, when it's finished and the weapon's being placed inside the holster or drawn out. Get this two-sided tape here that, uh, to help hold the, uh, this metal brace here while it's being glued together. Lassie's out here helping me. I'm going to have to put her back inside though when I get this glue out because the fumes drive me crazy and I'm sure it drives a dog crazy too, since her sense of smell is so much better than mine. So basically, I'm going to put a coat of barge on all four of these pieces, I'll let it dry, and then I'm going to come back over with a second coat, I'll let that tack up, and then I'll go and stick them together. Let this tack up for a little bit, and now I'm going to stick them together.
Now what I'm going to do, that I got these tapped down and glued together, I'm going to put them here on my main piece of marble on my workbench here. And then I got the smaller piece of marble. And I'm going to set this on top and I'm going to leave it there overnight. So now these two pieces are evened up and knocked the edges off. When this gets stitched together, I'm still going to run it through the belt sander one more time once the pieces are joined in order to make sure that uh, these pieces look even before I burnish and dye the edges. But as you can see, the little metal bracket there for the thumb break is completely encased inside the leather, so there'll be no issues uh, with it scraping against the weapon when it's drawn out. The next thing I need to do is uh, go ahead and hit the sides with my edge groover and then sand my points down from where this stitching line is all the way around to this stitch line and then along the bottom from this line to this line and it'll correspond the same way on the other piece but Right now it's a lot easier to get to these parts of the holster, especially right here, while well, they're not uh, together. And actually this area right here is pretty much next to impossible to, to get to once it's sewn together. Because once it's stitched together, you're going to have this back piece here and you'll end up getting dye and uh, all over that piece and it would be impossible to burnish it so that's why we do that. You use some EcoFlow leather dye on the edges here. So now I have the two pieces stitched together as far as the, uh, the front and back on the panels that need to be stitched before I stitch the main bodies together. I had to rethread the machine and only have one spool of white 207 thread. So I don't can't just sit here and wind a bobbin uh, as I'm sewing. Uh, that'll change. I'll order another spool soon. 
But anyway, um, that required me to uh, cut the main thread going down through the top needle in order to uh, feed the bobbin winder. And when I put uh, re-threaded the machine, I neglected to realize that the pole for the uh, work light was rubbing up against the side of the spool of thread and I was wondering why it would sew real fine and all of a sudden the, the tension would get real tight on the thread and then it would loosen up again and just that little bit of pressure from the uh, work light pressing up against the side of the spool was enough to mess up the stitching so it shows how sensitive these machines are but uh, The stitching all looks pretty even all the way across, and we'll get uh, to sewing these pieces together here. I'm going to stick these two together. And we'll get them set up to dry overnight. Now I got the two sides tapped down. Helps set the glue a little bit. I'll just let that sit overnight. I just took the stone off this holster. It's been, it had all night to dry. Now I'm just gonna take the belt sander and just touch it lightly all the way around the unfinished parts just to even them up. And then I'll proceed with uh, finishing all these unfinished edges. Now I'm just starting the same process again of going 220, 400, um, and then I'll burnish the edges and use uh, the same die on these edges here and slick it all up. Now I'm gonna attempt to stitch the front of the holster. Now the needle's coming back up, like I've done so many times before, I'm just going to turn the stitchy, or the presser foot around. Just going to back stitch up two stitches, that'll be sufficient to lock it. Alright, the stitching's done. Overall, it looks alright. I was able to go around the corners without dropping any loops. And I was able to meet up the stitches, each stitch line, where I wanted them to meet, such as this intersection here, 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 and here. Now I'm going to finish uh, up with the uh, edges here and then we'll start wet forming. All right. 
so in that short video I made about this burnishing process I'm gonna start all this is is regular Tandy black uh, uh, leather dye it is nothing special I've tried using the edge flex paint and the Phoebe's uh, edge paint and it's their, their stuff is nice but anytime you get something that needs to be uh, where the leather is going to be bending or moving you're going to end up with all these cracks here and so far this uh, using the dye versus that paint seems to be working pretty good I just use this little dye applicator and I don't know how well you can see that but I just go along and just move back and forth and apply the dye exactly where I need it and since it's dye it uh, absorbs into the leather and dries pretty quickly so the paint it dries pretty quickly too but it usually needs more time and it just increases the amount of chances you have to rub up against something it's kind of the progress I'm making Now I have the dye run all the way around my edges. Now I'm just wiping it down. I'm supposed to be burnishing it with this uh, piece of canvas. It feels like I'm just wiping it down. And it's already starting to shine up a little bit. I'm going to start the wet forming process and to do that I'm just going to let this soak in this water here for about five minutes. All right, I just took the holster out of the water. Like I said it sat there for about five minutes. This is just a plastic blue gun. I got from Maker's Leather Supply down in Texas, but it's the exact form of a Glock Model 23, and I'm going to use that to help form uh, the leather around the, the weapon. So I'm going to open this up just a little bit with my hands, and then I'll slowly work the weapon down in there and you said that leather's nice and soft from the water and it's a vegetable tan leather so it will hold the shape and I'm just gonna let this dry overnight with the uh, blue gun inside and then I'll take it apart in the morning and finish it up there's one hole And also before I punch these uh, holes out, I made sure to re-wet the leather thoroughly on both sides. Otherwise I'd be hitting this all day. And there's the other hole.
And I'm just going to put a coat of Neat's Foot Oil on this. I'm just going to put one coat for now, and I'll put a second coat on a little bit later after this dries. with this holster and this is how it works it weapon fits in there and then the top strap comes down and secures it and then when the person's wearing it they can break the thumb snap and draw the weapon so but on top of the thumb strap, um, I think the leather, um, the smooth leather liner that I used works pretty well because it sticks just enough to keep the weapon in place, but it can still be drawn. And this is, like I said, this is for the Glock Model 23. And I actually think you can, I, I took a Glock Model 22 that I have and uh, it'll fit in this holster as well. It's just the barrel sticks down a little bit past the end of the holster there. So, so if you stuck with the video this long, thanks for watching. Um, I appreciate it and I'll see you next time.